I'm so glad to see you again, so glad to be with you. And I pray that it's a good day for you. Uh, we're in a culture right now in our uh, world uh, of a good deal of uh, excitement uh, and uh, I think uh, of uh, insecurity and uh, such uh, with an election coming up just now and uh, more than that, uh, so many economic uh, uncertainties. Uh, but some things remain certain and in those we take our strength and our sustenance. Uh, I'm glad, therefore, to be with you again. Uh, I was reading this morning in my devotional time uh, the last part of that longest chapter in the Bible, Psalm 119. Uh, I suspect you know a good deal about it without my r relying too much upon uh, a full discourse. I want simply to remind you that not only is it the longest chapter in the Bible, all of it is about the same subject, uh, the law of the Lord, or the word of the Lord, uh, the commandments of the Lord. Uh, it was written uh, sometime in the uh, period of the people of Israel uh, after they had uh, in their possession uh, the Torah, the law of the Lord, and uh, this writer, or maybe a group of writers, we have no idea for sure, uh, rejoicing in the goodness of the law of God. It's written, of course, also as an acrostic poem. Uh, that is, that uh, each section of eight verses begins with successive letters in the Hebrew alphabet. So you have 22 sections in the poem, uh, eight verses each, uh, built around that acrostic form. But they're all trying to tell us the same thing. Summed up, I suppose, in that particular phrase that says simply, Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation day and night. I pondered that this morning as I came to the end of the reading of that psalm. Because, you see, a good many folks who love their Bible love the promises that are in the Bible. I remember that my mother had a box that was called the Precious Promise Box. It was in a special place in the kitchen where she, every morning, would pull out one of those cards. Uh, it was her promise for the day as far as she was concerned. And very frequently it seemed to have some special sense of connection, uh, almost a mystical or a providential tie with the day. And in any event, it was always a source of blessing because it was one of the promises of God. It's natural, of course, to love the promises of the Lord, to be reminded of the goodness and faithfulness of God. It's another thing altogether, however, as in Psalm 119, to remember the kind of faithfulness we ought to keep to God and the kind of promises we ought to be making to our Lord God. The promises that are put upon us and the obligations and responsibilities put upon us by the law of the Lord. One must, I think, be a very good disciple if one is to be so excited about the commandments of the Lord. Not many of us go seeking the, the demands of any contract. I suspect that when we sign a contract uh, to take a job, uh, we look at the job description but we find our greatest joy in the description of how long the vacation will be, uh, what uh, extra benefits the job will afford, and of course what the salary will be. We don't look for the demands of the job except to the degree that we think we'd better know them. But this man, this group of man, men or men and women who gave us this psalm, they saw the joy of having expectations on God's part toward them so that they wanted, one way or another, to fulfill the law of the Lord. That's good religion, don't you know? We happily say in the Christian faith that we're not under the law, we're under grace. But I think if there's grace enough in our lives, we will love the law of the Lord and we'll love the chance we have to live up to 
God's expectations of us. So, my word today is simply, it is wonderful that we can have such high expectations of God. God's mercy, God's grace, God's ever-loving justice and faithfulness. It is also a good thing that we should think about God's expectations of us and that he holds them out for us in the law that he has given us. That's what's on my mind today, and I hope it's good for you. God bless.